Hey, how you doing? This is Tony, and this is the episode about nothing. Seriously. Sometimes you're just listening for nothing. Maybe fall asleep on, listen to, and just go to sleep listening to it. So, uh, I'm going to look for something that uh, make you fall asleep. Why not? Anything. Something old. An old newspaper. I personally would like to read something. Let's see if we can get something from, uh, I don't know. Well, this is all the Pacific Northwest. About, uh, we'll go back a bit. It'd be cool to find something about uh, maybe Philadelphia, since that's kind of like where I'm at in that area. Come on. Hmm. It's hard, man. It's uh, there's so many pages. These are all digitized newspapers. Yeah, let's see what we got. Yeah, all states. Let's just narrow this down. Could help me in my search a bit. Mm, excuse me. Long day today. Had a funeral. Um, it's a buddy of mine. His father passed away, and you know, sad. And simultaneously, it was, uh, well, I tell you, it was just inspiring in a way how the, the love that this family had for their dad. And they talked about him and what they remembered about him. It was really, it was really a nice eulogy given by uh, a couple of the brothers. Anyway, I just uh, took a walk afterwards. It was a beautiful day, a little chilly out. And uh, I like when you take a walk. In the cold, and then you get tired when you get home. But I'm really tired because I got up very early. It's like four o'clock. Just thinking about that made me yawn. <laughs> Why is that? Anyway, uh, let's get into this. Again, I am on the Library of Congress. Digitized newspapers. This one's from uh, 1791 to 1793. The National Gazette. In Philadelphia. And so, uh, maybe I can read it. Hopefully there's not a whole bunch of thou's and they and thee and thine. Let's see what's in here. And I'm just going to kind of snag this from, uh, this is written by Philip Freenew, Monday, October 31st, 1791. And uh, let's see what we can find here says, uh, to the public, the editor of the National Gazette, having found his propals for establishing a paper of that kind, attended with all few cells he could reasonably expect. Considering, <laughs> listen, they're using F's and um, for S's and stuff. It, it's really strange how they have this printed. Maybe they, the printer was jacked up. And they had to utilize what they had. Like New Jersey instead of New Jersey. Uh, very strange. Makes it very difficult to read. So, so much for you, Gazette National of Philadelphia. We'll go back and find something different about this one. This one's called the Odd Fellows Journal. 1897. Check out the Odd Fellows. It's like the uh, the odd couple. Do, 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 do. Here we go. Resolutions uh, of condolence. Whereas it has pleased the Almighty by the hand of death to remove from our midst brother Peter Gown, our worthy brother on the 13th day of October, 1899, thereby causing the golden chain of social union to be again broken. Therefore, be it resolved that the Lodge has lost a faithful member, a brother worthy of our regard and respect, the church of a constant and devout Christian, the community, a respected citizen, who has gone from labor to reward, to join the Grand Lodge above. That's kind of interesting. Again, we're talking about... Uh, 
The Odd Fellows Journal. I've heard of them before. It says uh, membership of 160,000, most of whom are heads of families. Our jurisdiction covers the United States, Canada, the West Indies, Central and South America, and Africa. Very interesting stuff. But we will continue our hunt for more. Uh, maybe we have to move out of Philadelphia here. Mm-hmm. How about this? The Working Man's Advocate, Chicago, 1864 to 1877. Let's see what that has to say. kind of faded almost looks uh, water damaged and I'm looking at titles now just to see if we can find a story or so that might be of interest again this podcast episode is about nothing absolutely nothing tonight <laughs> why I'm reading this to you actually is to see if uh, you can get tired from listening to it some people need a little bit of help going asleep going to sleep and so I'm trying to help you out let's go out west see what we got Uh, how about Wyoming want to go to Wyoming let's check here we go why did it not take me to Wyoming go and here we are all right this one could be interesting I'll let you know. Maybe you can see if we can get back where to, back in the cowboy days. 1867 to 1870, the Cheyenne leader. Now, this is really jacked up and faded and such, but maybe it'll be legible. That'd be cool. Let's see here. This is interesting. Here we go. And this newspaper is uh, from September 10th excuse me, 19th, 1867. Tunneling under the Atlantic. A proposition is on foot to start the gigantic undertaking of running a tunnel under the Atlantic Ocean in order to connect the new with the old world by means of a submarine railway. The most eminent engineers, both in America and Europe, have been consulted and they have drawn up a a report which (laughs) which is perfectly feasible and uh, there must have been a piece of tape there because I can't read anything underneath it. So far as calculated approximately, it will require 500 million English pounds or two. I can't read that. Something $500 million. Plenty of capitalists are ready to engage in this marvelous undertaking. And as soon as plans are arranged, the money will be advanced. Again, a lot of it's missing. Shame. It's an interesting story. I never heard of that before. A tunnel, a submarine tunnel under the Atlantic. Let's check this out. Items. Here we go. Kisses a rather high in Vinegar Hill, Illinois. A justice there charged John Walters $20. Oops, excuse me. $20 for kissing a lady twice. You're kidding me. 20 bucks. A, a man in New Brunswick has recovered $25,000 from his physician for not properly attending to him. I'm thinking $25,000 back then was like, I don't know, probably like a million bucks today. Okay, Mrs. Kate Totten has sued the Pacific Railroad in St. Louis for running a train over her husband and killing him a few days since. She valued him at $12,000. Huh. Why wasn't he worth $25,000? I think they're a little off on her numbers here. I wish I had more items to read. I like those items. See if we can find more. That was interesting. All pages. Let's go to the next page. Maybe we'll find something there. We're still in the Cheyenne leader, by the way. 
September 19th, 1867. I want to see something about like someone stole someone's horse. And uh, he's going to pay for that. Nothing of the sort. Uh, interesting. Nothing of the sort. We'll go back and let's see if we got another page here. Okay, maybe this. Uh, hmm. Not really. I gotta add some of this out here. For the gout, toast and water. For bile exercise. For corns, easy shoes. For rheumatism, new flannel and patience. For the toothache, pluck it out. For debt, industry, and for love, matrimony. To preserve pickles and salt, use a quart of salt to a gallon of water, which will make a brine strong enough. There is no danger of getting them too salt, as they will probably absorb only about so much. Ladies who have a disposition to punish their husbands should bear in mind that a little sunshine will melt an icicle much quicker than a regular northeaster. Be temperate in diet. Our first parents eat themselves out of house and home. There is a region in Oxford County, Maine, where the soil is so poor that a single grasshopper might look over it and weep. <laughs> Just think, back then they had to set that type for that. It probably took a, a long time to set that type. Freighters and immigrants, uh, to dispose of their stock and merchandise, we pay particular attention to collecting freight and forwarding goods directed to our care. Price current of stock and merchandise of every kind sent to any point desired, free of charge. Fascinating what was happening in the world back then. Okay, we shall move on, see what else, uh, if we can find some more stuff here. Let me go to all the pages. I'm going to just pick a random page here. This kind of looks faded. However, I got a feeling we're going to find some gold in this one. That was a smart boy who was given by his teacher two words to spell. And you find at an, exa at an examination before visitors, Viper and Virgin, which you proceeded to spell in the... In, can't read that word. Thus, Viper, a young woman... Virgin, a dangerous reptile. <laughs> well, hey now, they had some humor back then. Let's see here. Guns, pistol, and cutlery. Sporting apparatus of all kinds. Fixed and loose ammunition. Double and single-barreled rifle and shotguns. Made to order. Every kind of repairing done with neatness and dispatch. And that is from... Freud and Brothers, Manufacturing Importers. Kind of neat. Hay and grain and stabling for teams. A trail is solicited. Well, it's a shredded paper for sure, but uh, kind of cool. So sometimes people look for uh, things to read that'll just kind of, like I said, put them to sleep a little bit. And who am I to deny someone some sleep? And we are over here again, back to the Cheyenne leader. Oh boy. This looks a little precarious. Tuesday night's murders. We gather from reliable sources the following particulars of the above affair. Between the hours of 9 and 10 o'clock on Tuesday evening last, a fatal shooting affair, shooting affair took place in the county, resulting in the sudden death of two men, one named Pat Malalay and the other known as Limber Jim. The facts, which seem to be enveloped in some obscurity, are as near as we can discern as follows. Malalay, accompanied by a friend, knocked at the door of a house of ill fame, demanding admittance, which was refused. Imme 
Immediately afterwards, a friend of the inmates was admitted, and at the same time, Malali forced his way into the building and shooting commenced. We have not been able to learn who fired, who fired the first shot, but two men, it would appear, were killed almost in the same moment. Malale received the contents of a double-barreled shotgun in the right side of his chest, producing a frightful wound and killing him instantly. And Limber Jim appears to have been shot from without the house by rifle or pistol, the ball from which passed through his arm entering the chest and causing instantaneous death. The affair has caused considerable excitement for a time, and men were seen scurrying towards the scene of the tragedy, armed with all sorts of destructive weapons. The police were lively engaged in endeavoring to cover and arrest the parties implemented, implemented in the affair, but we believe without success, as the only party engaged with having been engaged in, we learn, fully establishes innocence. Well, there you go. And we have some uh, 19th century jokes. Why is the tail of a dog like the heart of a tree? Because it is farthest from the bark. <laughs> we have heard much of the power of a woman's eye, but the eyelids are still more powerful. They can wink down reputation. Well, how about that? How about that? Uh, let's see here. If you want to get this newspaper, the Cheyenne Leader, and you want to pay in advance a tri-weekly edition, you can get one year of this newspaper for $12. Or you can get six months for $7. Or three months for $4. Or one month for $1.50. Or you can get it per week supplied by a carrier for $0.40. Cents. Or you can get a single copy for $0.15. Cents. Uh, what else we got? Anything? Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I don't really have anything more. I'm just kind of scanning it down. So you'll find podcasts out there that kind of cover, you'll have somebody just reading out of a, a magazine, random articles or whatever it might be to help people go to sleep. This is going to be an episode to put you to sleep. And let me know if it works. There's, it's not the first time as somebody would have told me, hey, uh, I was listening to your podcast and it made me fall asleep. <laughs> now, when I first heard that, I was like, that's preposterous. It's rude. It's ignorant. But the fact that the matter is, it's actually a compliment that means people find your voice uh, soothing and quiet and relaxing. Anybody ever hear of Sabine, Texas? I just came upon the Sabine News. And uh, unfortunately, it's not showing any newspaper, so I can't read it. I just can't. And let me go back. To the, let me see where. Uh, let's go into the R's. The R's. Uh, Mm, 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 mm. How about this? Man, no newspaper. It's weird. I mean, maybe I got to pick a big, big city. How about the? Uh, let's start with the D's. How about the Dade County Sentinel from Trenton, Georgia? No newspaper again. What's going on here? Show me something. Show me something good. Wow, wow. Now let's go to Delaware. Oh, we might have something here. Yeah, here we go. And this is called The Advance out of Wilmington, Delaware. Just a stone's throw from here. And let's see if we can read something out of local news. Popcorn. Had a fight with some guy named Joe. And nah, I'm only kidding. This is from 1900. That might be true. Wait a minute. No. Mm -mm. 
It's just a joke, folks. Calm down. Yeah, there's nothing happening. There's nothing happening in Wilmington, Delaware on Saturday, September 22nd, 1900. Nothing. I mean, there's some political notes. Thomas E. Postal is a keen-witted political worker. Few men in Wilmington command greater respect or can to gather larger audiences. I wonder if there's an editor for these newspapers. The Living Issue is an address to be delivered by Professor Murray next week before the Expansion Club. We'll have to get there. Whoa. Yeah, this is interesting. And this is under uh, John Hun, nominee for governor. Mm, 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 mm. Let's see what this says here. The family records of John Hun will show that at least 336 slaves were harbored and helped to escape by this magnificent, magnificent friend of the Negro. That's what this says. For his self-sacrifice in this work, he was again and again arrested and again and again fined under the infamous fugitive slave law until all of his worldly means were taken from him and he was left to financial ruin with nothing left but a conscience, a conscience which God approved and a record which the liberty-loving people everywhere must revere. That's cool. And it's a gentleman by the name of John Hune, H-U-N-N. And he's a nominee for governor back in Wilmington, Delaware in, the 19, in 1900. And he's a member of the Re- Republican Party. In supporting the Republican Party, the Negro does not always have such a splendid opportunity to vote for a scion of an old-time abolitionist as he will have when he cast his vote on the 6th of November for John Hun for governor of Delaware. In the days that tried white men's souls and tested in the furnace of social and political persecution, the true manhood of the man, the father of our candidate, John Hun Sr., was the Tommy Garrett of Lower Delaware. He was the chief engineer of the Southern Division and of the Underground Railroad, and hundreds of slaves, through his personal aid and direction, either escaped directly to the North and to Canada or found for the first time being a safe hiding place in that halfway house of freedom. Tommy Garrett's barn, whence the guiding star of freedom. Tommy Garrett pointed them to and where bloodhounds and slavers were not known. It's interesting. That was what was going on in, uh, in 1900 in Wilmington, Delaware. You got a Republican nominee from governor, John Hun, and he's out there, uh, Basically, gave all his wealth, lost it all, being arrested and arrested and arrested for assisting and helping slaves find their freedom. That's interesting. I mean, we can kind of like, uh, you know, it's a great story. And that can be found, uh, again, it's called the Advance. And uh, that is under the Library of Congress, Chronicling America. And that was from Saturday, September 22nd, 1900. A little political news about John Hun, nominee for governor in Wilmington, Delaware. You don't think about that. You never hear about those types of stories. It's history. You might have, who knows how many people might have read this, may have known about this guy. And he felt it was right to fight for slavery, fight against slavery, excuse me. And it cost him everything, which is very cool. Because he was, uh, it was good in his heart. And he felt as if he uh, was following God's path to do that. Uh, and these are the words of back then, you know, utilizing, you know, the word Negro and such. Uh, in fact, it says here, every colored man in Delaware should support John. Every colored man in Delaware will support John, barring a few black political monstrosities whose numbers are few and whose moral sense and manhood must be an utter wreck. So they're talking about uh, Democrats down there. Uh, Mr. Hahn has always been a plain, unassuming man, and his life and habits are marked with that simplicity and candor which characterized 
the very reputable people, the friends of which he is an eminent, eminent, excuse me, descendant. He has never sought office and only now consents to leave his hitherto quiet life to help unify and save the state from the clutches, the Negro hating ring of moss backed Democrats. It was a, it was a different world back then. Whew. So, you know, this is a typical situation here where these are stories from the past utilizing different languages that we basically don't utilize today, but it's history. And some people don't want to hear that history or any history for the, for a matter of fact, but that's important to, to learn and to know uh, what was going on. Again, you learn from that and hopefully you better yourself from that. Are you asleep yet? <laughs> Found some local news. The Enzian Church is preparing for one of the greater rallies in its history. Look for particulars in next week's episode. Reverend Aku of the Union American Church is holding the fort in a splendid manner. The young people of that church are a tower of strength. Reverend Sargent is back from his trip to Canada looking spirited and well. And Reverend Brown of the African Union gives good reports of his church's work. One of the best sermons yet delivered of that of Reverend M.C. Brooks to the children of Sunday school last Sunday morning at the Bethel AME Church. Reverend Brooks has a charming style of narration and pointing out moral. Let's move on to another one. It's kind of cool. How about the uh, Daily Enterprise, 1858? That also is from Wilmington, Delaware. Delaware, tax-free. All right. That was a whole lot of writing here. Hmm. There we go. This is oh, this looks interesting here. Let's see here. A strange phenomenon. This is written for the Daily Enterprise. In fact, let's go to the, the title here. This is uh, the Daily Enterprise from Wilmington, Delaware, 1858. Excuse me, 1858. Uh, let's check it out. Written for the Daily Enterprise, a strange phenomenon by Ego Ips. A man once saw a moon. T'was not the moon on high, but at the bottom of a pond, which was by no means dry. And much amazed was he to see so strange a sight, the heavens underneath him and the stars all shining bright. Now in the school books he had read one of many wondrous things of how the world turned upside down and how a star wore rings. He was not versed in heavenly lore and though at a strange whim that bodies always fixed before should go and take a swim. <laughs> then feeling rather dry he thought he'd take a drink but stumbling o'er a stone plump in the mud did sink. In truth he then saw stars but they were in his eyes while the moon had left the water and looked down from the skies upon a now quite sober man who henceforth will be wise. And the moral of that story is though water will make you sober. If you happen to fall in it, it will surely make you drunk. If you drink your brandy in it. Okay. <laughs> Park Benjamin in his poem on hard times makes the following E. Uh, capital hints. Here we go. Next of all, on capital hints. Go it while you're young. Americans are much renowned for phrases said or sung, and the earliest thing to children taught is go it while you're young, a mandate which they all obey, and if the truth were told, the vast majority keep on and go it when they're old. Let her rip another phrase which often glides in music from the lip is one of the significance and beauty let her rip. In the late panic, we have kept this mandate o'er and o'er, and let her rip so frequently that some can rip no more. <laughs> There's a little mangling of the newspaper here. Then we can go down to this. A chap publishes a challenge in a Western paper to any man in the world 
to beat him walking a plank without rest. The editor of the paper, having learned that the fellow was confined five years in a treadmill, offers to back him for two cords of wood. <laughs> a poor Irishman offered an old saucepan for sale. His children gathered around him and inquired why he parted with it. Ah, my bonnies, answered he. I would not be parting with it, but for a little money to buy something to put in it. How about them apples? All right. At a ball in Baltimore, a gentleman having danced with a young lady whose attractions, both personal and conversational, seemed to have made an impression on his sensibilities, asked to have the pleasure of seeing her on the following evening. Why, no, sir, replied the fair one. I shall be engaged tomorrow evening, but I'll tell you when you can see me. I shall be most happy, exclaimed the stricken swain. Well, on Saturday night, resumed the lady, you can see me at the foot of Walnut Street Wharf selling clams. When we... <laughs> okay. <laughs> when we hear these words, am I not my own master, coming boastfully from the lips of a young man just entering upon his majority, we cannot forbear recalling the reply of a French prince to a stranger whom he encountered in one of the rooms of his palace. Pray, sir said the prince, to whom do you belong? To myself, gruffly replied the stranger. Ah, my dear sir, was the ready retort. What a pity it is you have such a stupid master. Okay. Well, we're going to wrap this. A half an hour of nothing, which is okay. Sometimes we need to hear nothing. Sometimes you listen to something, which is really nothing, and it kind of lets you chill and relax and because there's nothing there like this. Sometimes you need to hear nothing, just words in a low and relaxed tune. For Finding Subjects, I'm Tony with nothing tonight. Hopefully you'll get to sleep. And until the next episode, we'll talk to you later. You take care of yourself. See you.